Welcome, Justice McKenna. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Kahui Ho'olauna. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. It's such a pleasure. Now, you're an accomplished UH alum, and you have so many inspiring stories to tell UH students, so we just want to get to know you a little bit better. Thanks. So you've been on the Hawaii Supreme Court for about three years now. Yes. What has your experience been so far? It's just been wonderful. It is just the most awesome experience. I'm so honored to be able to be in this position. And did you know when you were a child that you wanted to pursue a career in law? Or what were your aspirations back then? Not at all. As a child, I always thought I would be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And then I, as I got to high school, I kind of wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I was, and I went to UH. I started at UH. Uh, after a while, I decided I thought I would become an interpreter because Japanese is my first language. So I thought I would be a Japanese English interpreter. Um, actually, while I was a, a, a basketball player, uh, one of the Wahine volleyball players um, went to law school. Um, and I thought, wow, um, athletes can go to law school. So I started thinking about law. And, um, I thought I was going to be an interpreter, uh, but then I decided, you know, I didn't want just to interpret what other people were saying. So I thought, you know, um, perhaps law school might be good for me also. And I know you grew up in Japan, so how did you make that transition to Hawaii? Well, it was definitely an adjustment. It was culture shock for me, even though I grew up in a U.S. military environment. Um, and of course, to be away from home for the first time. And I actually graduated from high school early. I was 16 when I started college. And how did you decide at such a young age that UH was the college you wanted to attend? Well, um, see, I grew up in Japan. My mother was Japan, Japanese, naturalized U.S. citizen. My father was a uh, from the Midwest. His, he was an educator. Uh, he taught uh, psychology for the University of Maryland. His dream was to retire teaching at the University of Hawaii but, and to have me attend the University of Hawaii. But he died, unfortunately, of a heart attack when I was nine. And then he was buried at Punchbowl. And I knew that my mother would eventually be buried at Punchbowl. And um, I also uh, loved Hawaii. We had visited Hawaii several times. And ironically, the last book that my father completed reading was the book Hawaii by Michener. And so I thought, you know, this is kind of meant to be. And you spoke a little bit earlier about playing basketball. I know you had a scholarship. Yes. Um, how different was athletics back then? I know it was right when Title IX was beginning and you were on one of the first women's basketball teams. Right, I was actually on the first Wahine basketball team. What happened is everybody needs to remember Patsy Takemoto Mink, Congresswoman mm -hmm. Mink, who got Title IX passed through Congress. And in 72, you know, there were no, uh, when uh, Title IX passed, there were no uh, women's uh, collegiate teams. And then so 74 was the first Wahine basketball team. So when I walked on and I made the team, um, they had these scholarships. And uh, I'll never forget Patsy Dung giving me one. How did you decide to stay here in Hawaii and attend the law school here when there are so many other maybe mainland colleges you could have gone to? I did get accepted to some really good law schools in the mainland, but UH was always my first choice because I knew that I wanted to stay here and practice law. Because, you know, when I came here, the people here were so kind. And I wanted to be able to give back to this community because, you know, it's the people of the state of Hawaii that paid for my college education. And I'm really honored to have been, you know, able to graduate in, uh, as a member of the seventh graduating class in 1982. And what was it like transitioning from the circuit court to the Supreme Court? Well, uh, from so I was a district court from 93 to 95, circuit from 95 to 2011, the last several years uh, as family court, uh, uh, senior judge of the family court here. Uh, but the transition is different. As a trial judge, you preside over trials, settlement conferences. It's really con a lot of every day is you know, especially family court, the calendars are very, very busy and a lot of people contact. Um, at the Supreme Court, it's much less in terms of people contact. It's really focused on the scholarship side of the law, legal research, writing. Of course, we have oral arguments. And as Supreme Court justices, we also have, we also assist the Chief Justice in administrative uh, duties. And it was widely reported when you were first nominated that you were the first openly gay justice on the Hawaii Supreme Court. What did that mean to you? 
Well, you know, it was important to me, um, especially because of my experience in family court. I was really surprised to learn some horrible statistics um, that, you know, LGBT youth are four times likely to attempt suicide. And what was really troubling to me was that um, LGBT youth that comes from families that reject them are eight times as likely to attempt suicide as LGBT youth at, that come from families that accept them. Mm. And so when I realized that these youth were much more likely to attempt suicide, I decided as an Asia Pacific American, it was important for me to come out and say that, hey, and not just for the youth, but also for the parents, uh, for the community to realize that this might be an aspect of our lives, but we are productive members of the society and we are just like you. And how do you see the future of women in general in your profession? You know, it's, that's a good, that's an important point. What people need to remember is that Title IX, people talk about sports. The biggest impact of Title IX was in education. Mm -hmm. In 1972, when Title IX passed, only 7% of all United States law school graduates were women. Now it's like 50%. Um, obviously, if only 7% were graduating, you know that the percentage of women attorneys was less than that in 1972. That's only 42 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, in now, the percentage of women attorneys in the United States is 33%. It, th that's about the same percentage of, the, of judges. Um, it, we still aren't at 50%, uh, but in the next 10 to 20 years, we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not just in law, but also in medicine, in engineering, the sciences. Um, and the other important part of Title IX is that it also helped men uh, get into other professions that other were traditionally reserved for women, like nursing. Mm -hmm. You didn't see male nurses before. It's been so interesting getting to know you. I wish you could talk longer, um, but just give us your final thoughts. Um, what wisdom would you give to maybe students who are about to graduate or just UH students in general? Well, enjoy your college experience and enjoy these times. Don't be afraid to stand up for what you think is right. Don't be afraid to go against the grain. Uh, but also, um, you know, know that the University of Hawaii is an extremely special institution. Be proud. I am extremely proud to be a University of Hawaii graduate. And um, I encourage the local kids to seriously consider the University of Hawaii because this is an excellent institution. That's such great advice. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Aloha. Aloha.